Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good golly, Miss Molly. Uh, welcome to this impromptu, uh, not long out of the theatre review of a uh, new Korean movie, which I've been anticipating for some time, as it stars a couple of my favourite actors, uh, a movie called Ransomed, which I took the trek into the city to see today. And uh, just not long arrived back from seeing that movie, which I thoroughly enjoyed and thought I would share a few thoughts on it for those who may be interested in uh, Korean cinema and in this movie in particular. So, <clears throat> not scripted. I will try to avoid too many spoilers. There may be inadvertent light spoilers ahead, so forgive me for, uh, for that. But uh, let's talk about the movie then. So... Uh, ransomed or unofficial operation as it was known as at one point we got rebranded is a um, movie set in 1986-87 in civil war torn Lebanon and it is uh, so prior just prior to from Korean historic terms just before the 1988 Seoul Olympics which uh, uh, you can place the film in time when you're watching it from references to that in the Korean scenes. So it uh, revolves, or, and I guess you could describe it, I would describe the movie as a, it's it's a, an action movie. It's a light-hearted buddy movie. It's certainly got a strong buddy, ele buddy movie element with the two leads. It's a drama. It's an action thriller. It's got that a really nice blend of all of those elements, which is hard to do, to juggle them all. Um, particularly to, to inject humour at just the right point, but also later on, and particularly in Act 3, to get into some of the more emotional scenes, uh, more heartfelt scenes between the main characters. So, very difficult balance to strike in any movie. I think the director, uh, Kim Sung-un, has done um, a fantastic job balancing those it's really extremely like most korean movies these days uh it's extremely well filmed it's a fantastic uh scenes i think filmed in jordan um in terms of cinematography and look and feel it just it just feels great you feel like you're absolutely in um the mess of war-torn lebanon um civil war lebanon and the premise of the film revolves around a south korean diplomat uh, min yoon who is man's the Middle East desk in the Foreign Affairs Department in Korea. He's a bit of a an everyman. He doesn't really stand out, not particularly special, and he's kind of getting passed over for, for the plum of postings, as it were. He does have, though, as we discover as the movie continues, a lot of determination and, and a good moral heart. Um, and that determination is going to be needed because um, a diplomat, a South Korean diplomat, is uh, kidnapped by one of the factions in Lebanon and then disappears for a while. And then proof un is uncovered by Min Yoon that he's actually alive. So the question then becomes how, how to, to try and extract this poor diplomat that's been kept for a year in horrible conditions. Uh, there is a lot of political maneuvering between foreign affairs, the Korean CIA, uh, and the, the Blue House in Korea. There's a lot of political considerations in all of this, which I don't want to go into too much. However, the, the upshot is that Min Yoon, um, he volunteers to go uh, and rescue this uh, particular gentleman, but it's to be done unofficially and the money is to go through certain channels. Arbitrators um, who will help them in both Switzerland uh, and in an ex-CIA guy, they get involved um, because it's a tough situation over there. And um, and I think physically, they, 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 the way they, they portray uh, Beirut and other areas of Lebanon in this is exceptionally well done. You, um, you know, civil war is never pretty and it shows the devastation to the country. Uh, and it's, so Min Yoon does volunteer to go to take the cash through various means, get the cash there to pay off the militia that has kidnapped this poor Korean diplomat and rescue him. 
and um, I think it's, it's fair to say that uh, and, he, and there's a quid pro quo. He he does it because he wants to get a, a coveted posting to you know as a diplomat to the US if he can pull it off. Uh, but the Korean government wants this at arm's length for various reasons, hence unofficial operation. And of course, you know that things are going to, not exactly going to go smoothly, but he already shows a lot of bravery and determination in just getting into the country in the first place. And as we find out, the, the it isn't just the fact that the civil war is between the various factions, such as the Islamic and Christian militias. There's a bunch of gangs and militias there that purely want to just survive and they smell money and they, they, they know that this guy may be the conduit to some cash. So there's an awful lot of people looking out to get this guy and get that money and, and make things go wrong. So so an awful lot of that tension uh, of the movie revolves around just how is he going to evade all of that and and work with the militia there, the, the 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 friendly militia, if you want to call them that, who are willing to help uh, in terms of the cash and so on. So uh, he arrives and hooks up with possibly the only other Korean left in South uh, in um, Lebanon at this top point because the embassy had closed after the diplomat was um, kidnapped. Uh, and it's a guy who used to work as a driver there, Pan Su. So uh, he's working as a taxi driver in uh, Beirut, which is a precarious position to be. But at least he has some some grounding in what's going on there. Uh, although he's not necessarily, let's put it this way, the most um, trustworthy of characters. He's a bit of a chancer. But then he's dealing with a diplomat, so who knows? Maybe they both have things that they're good at not saying or doing. So... Uh, Lots of action and drama, a lot of people on their tail. There are there is action, there are car chases, there are gunfights, there are explosions. Our guys are not particularly suited, well versed in the art of war, so they're not using uh, they do handle a couple of guns occasionally, but they're not that's not their forte. They're using their um, personal skills to try and navigate their way through this, rescue the guy, and get out of the country, because getting out again is a huge problem. So uh, I'd say, and and the, the two main guys are just fantastic actors. I mean, what can you say about uh, Ha Young Woo? He is one of the leading actors in Korea, and there's a great good reason for that. He is very charismatic, but he can also play that every man role with but every man with a depth of resource within him uh extremely charismatic guy fantastic fantastic actor uh the other lead though who you were the two guys work extremely well together it becomes a really good bond and a great buddy uh movie uh, scenario he's his co-lead uh, playing pan Su's Zhu ji hun who is also fantastic and very charismatic in a much more cheeky way. Um, and he also rocks the best plaid pants since Bob Hope playing golf. Uh, <laughs> and also he has a very nice collection of Hawaiian shirts and so on. So he, uh, the pair of them are often at odds and some of the, and a lot of the, the, the comedic elements that are in, and I say comedic, lighthearted, because there's many serious moments in the movie, are between the rapport or otherwise between these two guys. Without giving too many spoilers away, there's one particular scene where um, the um, Pansu returns to the the remote desert-ish, well, scrub area that he abandoned. <laughs> he abandoned uh, Min Yu, uh, Yunin um, to rescue him after having a change of heart. And this is an exceptionally funny scene. You can see a little bit of it there. I mean, it's not giving anything away. This has been in the trailers. Uh, it doesn't go, he's not that pleased to see him. He's pleased-ish to see him. But, um, yeah, the two of them really do work great together. It's it's the heart and soul of the movie, and it's and there is a lot of heart and soul in this these two characters and their uh, travails, and become very close. And you find out a little bit more about the backstory of of Pan Su and why he's why he's been stranded in Korea. 
the two of them worked well, really well together in the Along with, with the Gods movies, uh, which there have been two of so far. There's a third on the way. Uh, great uh, chemistry between the two of them. Very different, but all, all different personalities, but very charismatic uh, in their own ways. So, uh, yeah, so I, I would say that um, the third act particularly, there's a lot of tension and a lot of emotion uh, and also a lot of action. I mean, we it's very difficult these days to, to get things like a car chase to have any particular novelty in it. Uh, um, but, you know, the, the, the chase, when they're being chased in the taxi through the streets of uh, Beirut, the ruined streets of Beirut and the alleyways um, with full of wrecked cars and broken down buildings by, you know, chased by jeeps with mounted machine guns on them. There's some pretty interesting stuff. And also um, a couple of fairly interesting ways that they managed to escape the bad guys. Um, Sort of. <laughs> Don't want to give too much away. Uh, the political maneuvering is always interesting, of course, um, in that the uh, Korean CIA is not necessarily on board with the uh, Foreign Affairs Department and their desire to bring these three guys home because uh, they do find the... Uh, I'm not giving too much away here because, again, it's in the trailer. They do find the diplomat. Um, getting out of the country proves to be the hard bit. And the that political maneuvering is is a common feature in a lot of Korean movies and um, I'd have to say that normally most people in government are portrayed in Korean movies as being corrupt and whatever and self-serving. There is an element of that here but there's also an element of Min Yoon's colleagues in the Foreign Affairs Department really really caring about what's going on and trying to do whatever they can to help the these guys out and to get out of the country, to get out of Beirut, get you know, out of the Lebanon. Um, but yeah, I don't want to give too much more away about that and indeed certainly don't want to give away how it ends up. But yeah, the partnership between these two guys is, is the heart and soul of the movie and there's some really well-acted emotional stuff between them towards the end. Um. Nice little supporting cast. It's not a huge cast. Um, but one guy I did want to get a shout out to is not a Korean actor that's in it, but the wonderful Byrne Gorman plays the uh, ex-CIA guy who gets involved. Um, and he's a pretty good guy. He's a great actor. Um, been in a number of great shows, one of which was playing Charlie Bloodhorn in The Offer, which, if you've never seen, is spectacularly good uh, Paramount Plus show about the making, dramatization of the making of The Godfather. He plays um, Charlie Bloodhorn, studio executive, studio owner, sorry, I should say. <laughs> it's not executive. He's bigger than that. And he just plays that role brilliantly. So it was nice. It was a nice surprise to see him because I didn't realize he was in it. So, um, or in Gorman, but there's, there's some, obviously some other great supporting characters too. So uh, to kind of wrap this up, I don't want to give, because if I keep talking, I'll give too much away with the plot. It's, um, the movie's produced and distributed by Showbox, or Showbox, as they say, uh, and it is uh, distributed in North America by WellGo USA, and if you want to see the screenings that are available in North America for this. Uh, you can see that on WellGo USA's Twitter feed or website, just search WellGo USA. Um, so um, it was a pleasure for me to see it in the cinema. Normally, a uh, vast majority of my Korean content uh, I'm watching on streaming or um, renting or whatever, other digital formats. So to go to a cinema screening of one, because a little bit of a trek for me was was really nice. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I do love these two lead actors. Uh, uh, great. There's some laugh out loud moments uh, <laughs> between the interaction between the two, but also a great deal of ta tension and drama, um, and, a, and an interesting portrayal of a of a hostage situation in a civil war scenario 
for a smaller country like South Korea to to try and get their guy out of there. So very enjoyable movie. Please check it out. And if you get the chance, uh, check out some of my other Korean previews and reviews of Korean movies and TV shows. Got another one coming up. Uh, another movie coming up in August, which I previewed called The Moon, which looks extremely good, Korean science fiction movie. And another one, uh, preview I'm putting together for Concrete Utopia, which is another movie coming out soon. Check those out, and I'll be back soon with more Korean content. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe if that's your thing. I appreciate you watching very much indeed. Till next time, uh, be well.